What's up guys? It's Cameron. This is a little bit of a different video. I'm gonna do an album review. Alright? Yeah? Is that cool? I don't know. Probably gonna get a lot of dislikes, but fuck it. I'm, I'm just trying different shit, you know what I mean? Alright, so I'm gonna be doing an album review of Eternal Grey by Suicide Boys. Some of the greatest of underground right now. I've been listening to them for about a year straight. Eternal Grey, let's get into it. Alright, first song we got here, Break the Law 2K16 with Puya. Obviously, highly anticipated feature here. We could have all guessed this was gonna happen. Honestly, it's like it's like that the one song that Puya had on Underground Underdog with Suicide Boys, I forgot what it's called. It's just another song of them just rapping, honestly. It's it's not it's not anything special. There's nothing in this song that really was like, oh fuck, that was tight. They could have brought something more, definitely with Puya, because obviously Southside Suicide is one of the greatest of all fucking time. Yeah, they, they could have definitely brought something a lot better on this song. Same lyrical flows as always. Just kind of washed up, grainy, sample in the background, nothing nothing too special on this track. Next track we have Say Cheese and Die. Sample in the background, I don't know what it's from. Sounds like it's from like a 90s rap song. They like to do that. I don't know what the sample in the background's from. It's tight. I like it. It, started, it adds so much. Scrim is so, Scrim is so good at really like picking these samples. Like I don't know how he does it. I, I don't know. I don't know how the fuck he does it. But just Scrim, Scrim is so fucking good at it. I don't know how he does it. I don't know. Another one of those just dark songs where Scrim just comes in where he's kind of mumbling. And then he just picks it up towards the end of this verse. And then it's just... 45 seconds of the beat again. Very dark song, especially the title, Say Cheese and Die, that's aiming towards society in some sort of way. Track three, Eclipse. Ruby, he's almost like he's rapping and singing at the same time and it's just fucking perfect. I, I don't know how Ruby thinks of this shit. The melody is perfect that he used in Eclipse. I don't know how he thinks of it. I really don't. I don't. Scrim's verse just comes in, mumbling, sounds fucking dark and shit. I fucking love the sample in the background on this one. It's like a piano type one. And then towards the end of the song, there's almost like this hook where Scrim is kind of singing. And I was just like very surprised about it. Like, let me just say something real quick. If I say something wrong about Suicide Boys, don't fucking rip me apart. I'm sorry. Just comment, be like, oh yeah, this, blah, 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 that. Don't be like, you fucking dumb ginger cunt. Cherry to Fire, another one of my favorite tracks on this fucking album. It, uh, I feel like I'm in a fucking horror movie. I don't know what that sample is in the background. I don't know what to call it, but it just, I feel like it's like the beginning of a horror movie or some shit. A lady fucking scary singing shit. The beat comes in and it's like this long 808 that pauses and then starts up again. And I think I fucking love those 808s. Like, I, 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 can't, I can't describe it. I can't. But the, 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 the sample in the background makes this song. It really does. And then the 808 adds onto it just enough more to make the song another fucking banger. And then Ruby comes in on his verse in the second half and just fucking kills it like always. His vocal techniques are off the fucking charts like always. It's almost like he has like a little squeal scream type shit in this. I don't even know what the fuck he says, but it sounds tight. I want to believe. When I first heard this song, started, I was like, all right, this is tight. And then Scrim like got pissed as fuck in the booth. Just started popping off. That's basically what I thought happened. And then Ruby was like, okay, I'm gonna do the same fucking shit. Off the charts. Scrim comes in over here, screaming, and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm gonna show this to my mom. I can't wait. So I was like, I don't fucking like this. I'm gonna be honest. I, I was like, I don't like this. This is like kind of too much, you know what I mean? And then now, three days later, I find myself clicking on this song and fucking liking it. I mean, I guess. I didn't really like the screaming at first. I tweeted the project is gonna have to grow on me, and the day, the next day, I was like, "Holy shit, it's already grown on me." They're just they're pissed as fuck in this song. If you want, if you want one of those aggressive screaming songs, here you go. I want to believe. And of course, they do it without effort. It sounds amazing. The, I don't know how Scream does it. Uglier featuring featuring Dash is the next track. Dash is just a mumbling rapper that I know from Playboy Cardi. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry if that offended anyone. His verse is the same as always. Just. You know, I don't really know how to describe his verse, just the song in general is just really slow. And vocal technique, Ruby's vocal techniques, of course, are good as always. He's he has a few fast parts in this shit. Grim comes in mumbling. It's one of those mumbling slow songs. I don't really like it right now, to be honest, but I, like every other song that they put out, I end up liking in a month. I'll probably fucking hold this song in a month. That's just how it works with them. Water Suicide, another fucking great track with Chris Travis. Well, I didn't mean as in like they feature with Chris Travis before, but I don't know if they have or not. I don't think they have. But sample was like, feels like I'm in a scary fucking sitcom from the 60s. And then beat drops and it's like a fucking, one of those uh, 
fast fucking beats and Ruby's just pissed as fuck and it's a banger. It puts a few sound effects of like a TV shutting off that sound, I don't know what it's called, and it just adds just more creative shit that Scrim does. I don't know how the fuck he thinks of it, but he does. He always, uh, like he puts himself down in these interviews, but he's really a fucking musical genius. He really is. So is Ruby. I don't know how the fuck. The, the tempo in the song almost reminds me of uh, Southside Suicide. It's so slow on the beat. Like, I feel like I'm in a fucking breakdown post-hardcore shit. It's just like a slow fucking 808. And then Chris Travis comes in and just fucking murders his verse. It's only like 30 or 40 seconds. Always delivers on his slow type rap. I think that's why they put this on him on the song. It's a dark version of Chris Travis and I don't think a lot of people have heard that. Like Chris Travis is usually just a guy that talks about like drugs and shit. I don't really looked in the lyrics. Just the, the samples just make it another type of Chris Travis that no one's heard before. Eliza and Elijah and Fields. I don't know what that where that place is at on this earth but Probably somewhere in New Orleans. The sample in the background makes me feel like I'm in a fucking Mario or some shit. I mean, it's tight. I, I think it's tight. Nothing too special on this track, honestly. It's just one of the tracks that's probably gonna have to grow on me. I don't find anything special on this track, but it's just just mumbling rap from Scrim, and then he gets mad like always, and then screw Ruby over here just doing his uh, same techniques with his just uh, crazy shit that he thinks of. I don't know how they do it, but Elijah Field is just one of those tracks that's just nothing special at the moment. 275 Suicide seems like every fucking feature on this album is fucking amazing. It's just a hard ass beat with just the usual Suicide Boys flows and just Ruby pissed as fuck and Scrim pissed as fuck and I can't really describe the sample in the background. It's almost like a fainted piano type shit, but it's just definitely distorted, but it's beautifully created by Scrim. I, I keep saying that, but the kid really is a fucking legend. I don't know why I called him a kid. He's like 26. I just stepped on something. Young Simmy comes in and does his usual shit. The same shit he does on his songs, just talking about other rappers and shit. And just the same Young Semi as always, just on a Suicide Boys track. Lucky Me, one of those tracks that has a sample that I don't know where it's from, but I've heard it a million fucking times and it's gonna piss me off. But, the I haven't read any of the lyrics on this album, but you can tell the, the lyrics in this song are passionate. It's one of those sad songs that just comes in and just like, you're like, holy fuck. Definitely one of those passionate, sad songs, the drowsy sample in the background. And you can just tell that um, these two fuckers are sad. They constantly put out songs, and I'm just like, these motherfuckers are really are sad as shit. But it, it somehow it's just so appealing to the listener, and I don't know why. I really don't know why. It reminds me of Low Key and Have and Have Not with just the, the overall feeling of the song. Just sad and just fucking goes for some reason. Like it's, I guarantee in a month I'm gonna fucking love this song. I keep saying that, but really, they, it's hard to win when you always lose. Track with a very uh, distorted, low pitched uh, voice from probably a rap song. <laughs> Scram has a fast part in this song, very surprising. I didn't know he could do it, honestly. I, I always thought that he was just a mumbling type, sad fucking, just the, his voice was just always why people appealed to him, but apparently this motherfucker can rap quick. Ruby Sam is always just fucking killing with his vocal techniques, and Sam on the background just makes it more drowsy, and I feel like I'm on fucking acid or some shit in this song. Opana? Opana? They put out a music video for this song about a week ago, I think. One of those samples that you can, you're just like, this song's gonna fucking go. For some reason, I fucking like this song. I don't do oxys or anything, but they're just, it's just tight. I don't know why. Scrim. He is like the fucking structure of this whole duo. This man is fucking a legend. I don't know how he thinks of these samples. Th their recipe for songs are amazing. Like this, the sample is so drowsy. I literally, like their music video was drugs falling in the background on the green screen. Perfect. Fucking perfect. That was the best idea ever because they, I feel like I'm on a drug listening to the song. When I was watching that music video, I was like, these motherfuckers are high as shit. That basically describes the song. Just go listen to it. Leave your things behind too. I don't think I've ever heard the first one. I don't, I don't know. They have they have a lot of singing on this track. Reminds me kind of a Muddy Blunts, but it's just slower and low key mixed together. Ruby sad as fuck like always singing. Grim surprised me yet again. I mean, uh, singing again. I I don't know. I distorted sample in the background. Kind of sounds like there's some fuzzy shit in there too. I don't really know how else to describe that sample. One of those singing songs once again. Just another fucking banger that I'm gonna like in a month probably. I like it now, but in a month I'll probably know every fucking word. Finally, Ultimate Suicide. This is the banger with Denzel Curry. There was a reason why they put it out as a single because they knew it was a fucking banger. Fuzzy, it sounds like there's some pictures being taken and chainsaws and shit in the background for the sample. Beat drops and Ruby's pissed as fuck and he's screaming. At the end of each sentence there's a scream and he's just like popping off. One of those just aggressive like holy shit. I knew it as soon as I heard it, I was like this shit is so tight. 
Then there's a long pause and it sounds like there's some sort of abandoned field on a movie and then Ruby or er, and then Scrim just starts screaming. He's just talking about fucking drugs like always and shit. Very powerful, aggressive. Denzel comes in doing his lyrical flow type shit. Towards the end he starts sounding like he's like monotone and some for some reason it's so tight. Denzel fucking killed it. He really did. Yeah, that, that just about wraps this up. Let me know if you guys want me to do some more album reviews because I guess I will. I just wanted to see if this was a thing I could do. Go follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. Subscribe to my gaming channel and my live stream. See ya. If you're from me, you're from